Yeah, the eyelashes are already starting to freeze. Well, it's minus 28 Celsius this morning. Welcome to testing day. Scandic the trail cutter. We're gonna test everything out that I did the past couple days. Stay with me. You'll see how this was all built and you'll see how it turns up, this R&D mission here. Welcome to the back country. So it's another 600 EFI, same motor in both uh, sleds that I spring checked. We got the uh, belly pan on this girl already. I threw my old hand guards and handlebar muffs on it. We threw the recoil off my 850. Oh, there's three taps on the narrow chassis. There it is there. Got the heated visor hook up on it and then I put all my bags off my 850 on it and then these ice scratchers got them all on so this sled's pretty well ready to go I might throw a hitch on it not sure I don't really want to do any towing with it but today we are removing what I spend so much time on so we're gonna take those off and then take the four bolts out of this and move it right back so I hauled that backcountry home on this um, and the two inch lugs hang down too far for me to even get the track underneath it. It was loaded with a uh, fork truck so I didn't have the ramps to even try it there. But we got to mount that in there today. So that's for the super clamp. So There's the super clamp there. I only bought one, but I bought three tie down spots. So I'm gonna put two in the trailer where two sleds are gonna go. I got this different style switch that I made a bracket for. So we'll put a plate over this. I got some aluminum, take that off, put a plate on it. We're gonna hide the switch on the inside. And the tie downs like that that I removed that are just into the sheet metal on the side. I removed them for some of the floor and lights and stuff. Uh, so I think I pulled out eight of them. I'm gonna relocate six of them into the two by two tubing. So I got all galvanized hardware for that. So uh, we'll get those strategically placed. And then the three locations for the super clamp here, two on the trailer and one on the truck. And because I simulated loading and unloading that backcountry without the section of the track that goes and hooks into the truck. And it worked just fine. I'm gonna cut that off, probably on this side of the log. So it's gonna be that much lighter and a lot less uh, hassle aligning. But that's what we're up to today. And I'm putting the heavy duty uh, bumper bumper on the Scandic in the garage here. <laughs> well, it's still in the house, but it's uh, warming up in here. Yesterday it was minus 30 Celsius, so we didn't do anything outside. But uh, it's got a 1,200 pound rated hitch, and we're going to a 1,500 pound. It looks quite a bit beefier, like significantly beefier. Now I'll show you the difference when uh, I get it on, but I don't know if I'll be able to run the plate like this, this tongue type plate that I removed the square receiver from. I might have to buy the draw bar and bolt this to it. We'll see once we get it on there. But where, what do we today? We're July, January, July, January 12th. And I think I've only given the driveway a light scrape. So pathetic scenario for snow so far this year. We haven't done anything with the sleds, but hopefully soon. So there's the backcountry up on the truck. We got the super clamp bracket mounted. It's all clamped down. That is super slick. They're pricey, but it makes tying down really easy. I had four straps on this one. I brought it home from the dealer and kind of pain in the butt. Um, lugs fit perfectly in the spacing there. They roll in and out just fine set the parking brake on it up there 
and the, the thing would probably not go anywhere because it can't really side too far lateral left and right because then the lugs start to bind. Um, but I just throw one strap on it. They're stored just in the center compartment of the racks here. But scan, oh, there we go. So we moved everything out back because I didn't have much clearance there to get an inch and a quarter lug track in there. So we cut that right off. It goes up there just fine. And it doesn't, by the time it pivots, it doesn't, uh, doesn't fall down in here. It climbs up on this, no problem. But yeah, there we go. The Scandic climbs up that uh, much nicer in low range. You have to come up with a little bit of momentum with this sled, but that's something that's new is that big old two inch track. Never run a sled with that. Hopefully it's not gonna cause me any issues and it'll claw through quite a bit of snow. But we got the ice scratchers here, so you just pull them out of their clips up there and they'll flick up some snow for cooling issues if we have any, but that concludes the setup here so the idea is when i want to go with just the truck it'll be the scandic up there most likely this whole setup comes apart and slides on either side of the pelican tub so i can have the pelican in there boat ramp and the sled no trailer well that's that on to this so the scandic came with this thing so must have been that way so this back plate here that's flopping around was a backing plate and it just sandwiched some sheet metal at the back of the tunnel here and then you had a inch and a quarter drawbar with some safety chain hooks and a pin hole there I removed it and just uh, mounted the tongue type hitch to the flange because it's cheap, much cheaper than their drawbar option but this is the heavy duty hitch, so I don't know if you can see that, but that's, I don't know, 3 sixteenths wall, double wall in there. So this is going to make a bumper, and you can see that it gets bolted all the way down the side of the chassis. And then, you're left with this guy, so I imagine here's where it uh, sandwiches around. Those guys like that. It gets all bolted and tied together. So this is going to be left back here. Like that. And I don't know if I'll be able to flush mount that. It's going to force me to get their drawbar. But it'll be heavier anyway than just the tensile strength of the four bolts. I mean, I guess that's all that's going on the drawbar too, but... It'll get it out further from the bumper too, which isn't good for tongue weight type stuff, but uh, there's not really any tongue weight with the sleigh. It's just back there floating, but it'll get you away from the snow flat. So now we gotta go on uh, BRP instructions and figure out how to do this. So that's the heavy duty bumper installed on the Scandic. Instead of using the hardware I recommend, or that came with the kit, just the sandwich, uh, the bumper into the hitch. I used the hardware that came with my tongue type hitch. So I got that on there. The only downfall is it blocks the inch and a quarter square tubing, but I have no need for it. As I just use that toboggan and this Pelican. For the original hardware that bolted the original hitch was reused with some fresh nuts and the backing plate was reused. This chassis bolt was removed and replaced with the longer one. And then, of course, these four bolts that sandwich that like that. And then under here, there's five bolts, these guys, that go through the tunnel brace. I don't know if you can see all five, but way up there. That last one was a doozy to get to. But, I just use the ratchet strap to suck the track down out of the way and make sure that uh, my lug spacing was right where the bolt was so that I could get uh, that little guy on it. So there we go, we got, it's tied into the chassis. 
sandwiches the uh, the rack all down in here. I'm su surprised. So originally they rated this uh, setup as 1,200 pounds, the uh, stock one. And now it's gone up to 1,500 with this, but this is way more, way more robust than the original setup. And now I have a low grab handle to help get me unstuck versus just the uh, rack up here. I can reach down a little further. We're on to the next project now. So I have these link multi plates, I think they're called. And we are going to bolt a Milwaukee pack out base, hopefully. Find a way to get these two together. Like that. And the Scandic is pack out, Milwaukee pack out compatible now. So you can get all the big tubs from Skidoo, they're pricey, but they're just one big open tub and everything's a mess. So when I'm out working on the trail and stuff, I want to be a little bit more organized. So I come up with this idea. And I would have had all the pack out stuff here, but the order got canceled. It shipped last Friday and it was canceled. So I'm going to have to, they refunded me my money. I'm going to have to go pick it up from Home Depot or something though. Anyway, that's the next project. Then I gotta get the windshield back on it. It's still off from weighing this thing, but then we're all ready to go. Gonna go load both of these on the trailer to figure out where I'm gonna put the uh, tie downs. But we're getting there. So with help from the laser here, this is what we came up with. So. I wish it was just a little bit wider because of a little bit overhang, but I had a scrap half inch pressure treated piece of plywood from the salt shield on the snowmobile trailer. So I trimmed it out, traced it the same as uh, the pack out. And the two link plates that are on here, they're two separate plates. So I had to have those fastened to the sled so it could only work from the top. Um, so essentially I set up the laser on the whole pattern that was, was on the, uh, let this off for you. So you can see I got hardware there. There's four, four bolts and each, uh, link mount. So I used the laser to find all those at the same reference point. And then the only two pack outs that I have engaged so far are just the center two. And again, they're quarter inch hardware through bolted. So I will paint this up black when uh, I finish the next project for it. So the rest of these holes, I don't have, I only have a pack of these legs. So I'm gonna get uh, one inch long, that's a half inch piece of plywood. And I think the, uh, throat on those uh metal spacers are about half inch so i'll get some uh one inch legs these are too too big to fit in that's all i have at the house here so i'll i'll hit up the other what is there five more holes and uh yeah it's just turn the you got four of those and the pack out is now a link accessory it just pops right out. And I have one more thing to build. Be able to hold a chainsaw on the back here. Skidoo charges 250 bucks for one that sits here. And I think 18 inch bar is uh, the biggest thing to go. There's a 20 on that and I have a 24 for it. So I want something that's gonna uh, hold a longer chainsaw. So I'm gonna make something and it'll be out of plywood and some hardware. When it's all done, I'll paint both of them up black. So there they are, a pair of them on the new setup. So we filled in that uh, hole from the old button and we got a new button mounted in there out of the weather. So now we have to mount two more of these guys for that super clamp. Get down in there, find a cross member that'll work. Mount that up. So you could squeak a little bit further, but it's not too bad off the back of the 
trailer. We'd go down the highway like that. Yeah, I'll just get uh, some tie downs along the side. Uh, three down each side that are in cross members. And this day is pretty well done. I just unloaded the back country off the truck and wrecked all of these. So obviously a rivet's not gonna do. I was coming down with too much speed. Tap the brake and of course it's uh, engages in the lugs of the traction mat. And we rolled all these. So one rivet's still holding on all the back ones. I'll have to drill it out and maybe screw bolt it. Something a little stronger. But happen on both sides. Like I said, the clutch engagement's a little quicker on the backcountry than going on and off with the uh, Scandic. And I tapped the brakes and they all bent or pivoted, broke a rivet and pivoted. So another project. I'm just repairing my uh, ramps. So I showed you in the last clip that uh, all the downward side of these uprights that hold my track um they all snapped a rivet and so there's four on each side on the downward side that snapped a rivet i had a rivet snap before this one here you can see it's different it uh that's a bigger steel rivet still 3 16 bigger head on it um and then the opposite rivet this time uh let go when i tapped the brakes backing the back country off so this one broke when I had the full length track attached to the deck and then I cut the track because I didn't think I needed it and all four snapped. So I've just drilled and tapped and put a little bolt in there. Now I reckon uh, the opposite rivet's probably gonna let go if I tap the brake on my way down next time. We'll see. Uh, I don't really want to do a full through bolt with a nut because um, when I use these for stuff with tires, I don't want the, the bolt getting into the tire. Um, yeah, so I just got two left, so I drilled out the 3 16 rivet that was in there and that one there. And of course, I don't have the right size drill, I just used the 3 16 drill. And it's a little stubborn tapping that with the quarter 20. But we're getting it, so two left, and we'll see what lets go next time. I guess that's the whole prototype or R&D that you paid for with other people, because I think I, this is my third or fourth time repairing this setup, and I haven't even gone anywhere. But we're gonna take the sled, the Scandic there. Once I finish the chainsaw holder uh, here this afternoon, it's going to the property here in a couple days this Saturday, and it's going to cut trail. So, uh, yeah, we'll finish this up. Well, this is going to be my uh, quick little chainsaw hole there if it works out. So I took, uh, I cut off 24 inches of one of my 4x6s, which is my roof rafter material. And uh, I marked out two lines four inches apart centered, so that's roughly how thick the blade is. And I gave myself a guideline over here offset to one side because I'm gonna have to notch in a groove down here to mount onto the bumper uh, <laughs> the saw is how it was from trail cutting probably not the sharpest but I'm gonna try to plunge cut roughly 18 inches <laughs> we'll see how this goes <laughs> Well, I was hesitant at first there and uh, had it kicked back a couple times, but I might be able to chop off a little, clean that up a little bit more, but now we just gotta get maybe something to help the fit of the body. I might even uh, give myself some grooves for the, the knives. Speaking of that's loose, so I'll have to tighten that up. But yeah. So I might, I'm gonna get a toggle cl uh, clamp and drill through the side of this. 
and it'll be able to clasp over and put some pressure on the bar it won't come out anyway you'll see what it'll be when i'm done so there's my plunge cut and then i did a couple uh kerf cuts for the knives on the 441 there and i was worried about this piece chipping off so i used my pocket hole my craig tool pocket hole and put some two and a half inch screws all the way down uh help that and then i installed that toggle there because these are designed to clamp something on the same surface um i had to change all this out to some all thread it was a little bigger so i had to drill out all this stuff to uh three eighths versus the five sixteenths and then i don't have a rubber stop on it anymore so it's just electrical tape on two uh double nuts jammed together so we'll try that out as a, a hold 9 20 on a friday night tomorrow morning i'm heading out i just wrapped up uh my trail cutting set up on the scandic here so we just got all our uh, safety stuff in there, first aid tools, fire stuff, shelter stuff, tow straps. And then we got this set up here. So I put some of this grip tape on the bar beneath this so that it can't slide. And then everywhere else that doesn't have grip tape has Gorilla tape wrapped around the bar just to prevent it from scuffing. But we have a 24 inch uh, bar, spare bar, because I'm only going in with one saw. Um, so it's just six inch uh, gear clamps holding the bar down and then these two are just wrapped around the bar so that's all wrapped in duct tape or gorilla tape so there's the channel that's straddling it and we got the toggle I had to put that on a, an angle clean that up and it's just putting pressure on the bar in there so you open that up puts pressure on it so it can't come out there's the uh, knives engaged into the kerf cut on either side and it sits up which is also wrapped in uh, gorilla tape on this side I do have a safety strap that I can put around or uh, gear ties so I managed to mount the little hatchet here even with the box on but the uh, handle strap wouldn't fit any of the holes and it had to go in the indent here of the uh, pack out base but that's on there good and then we have two link multi plates to a pack out adapter plate to a two drawer system so you fold that out of the way if you want so you got chain a couple chains for uh, the little saw if i take it uh just earplugs in a medicine bottle sharpie uh guides some spare spark plugs some wedges couple chainsaw tools, the file for the big saw, file for the small saw, and the flat files underneath this one. Um, and then this is the thumb screw that goes in here. So that's just one of those stump uh, vices. I cut the spikes off, drilled and tapped them with quarter 20, and I got the bolts coming up through into that. Well, you can see my crooked hole there. So there's the bolt head. And they're uh, Loctite holding them on and then we got a liter and a half of mixed fuel one liter of bar oil spare chain 24 inch 20 inch and yeah so you should just be able to set the saw up on this to work on it and sharpen it so we'll try that out now just gotta release the toggle give her a swift yoink out out comes the saw. Use your mighty needer. I may have actually yet to set that up there and try that. So tighten the thumb screw. Now that's that nice working height. 
to uh, sharpen the saw out on the trail. Sweet. I like it. So uh, this wraps up this video. Thanks again for watching. It's just a bunch of updates. I just build stuff and a lot of it fails and I gotta rework it and improve it for my needs. And uh, now I got the Scandic set up as a trail cut. The only other thing I'll bring is my uh, silky hand saw. But I'll have a big saw 441, a couple chains for this bar, a chain for that bar. So in case I get it pinched on my own, I can just uh, ditch the bar, load the power head back on the other bar, get myself out of the situation. I got wedges, I got an ax to hit them in, and I got the hand saw, all the spare parts and safety gear. And uh, we got to go wide out two uh, corners tomorrow and lay some logs in uh, a low lying area. We're alone tomorrow, so we're going to keep it safe and uh, get the job done. Thanks again. Well, there's not going to be a whole lot of footage. I don't think the phone's going to work that well, but main voyage there's not a whole lot of snow in here you can see uh, uh the four-wheeler tracks from last time but we made it in with the scandic all cold i'm not in full snowmobile gear so the trip in there's everything just how i left it so it survived the truck ride and the snowmobile track in See if uh, things work in the cold here. Everything's where I left it. Shovel stayed, saw, and lunch is in there. I opened up a hot paw or hot pack uh, hand warmer and put it in my lunch bag, and uh, hopefully it stays warm. But so there's a couple corners that I'm working on today. But I won't be bringing you along with me for it because this phone's probably going to shut off in my hand now. This one here, I'm going to take out probably four trees, come up into 10 foot sections because this corner won't be any good with long load. And then this, uh, this divot here, you can see my uh, snow flap scrape snow off of that because of the wow. So we got to get that filled in. Anyway. Thanks again for watching.